Let's learn about printmaking. Printmaking is a super fun thing that you can do using positive and negative space. Whatever you carve out will not be visible in your print. So you wanna think about that as you are making your design. Some of the tools that you are going to be using in printmaking are right here. Um, there's a rubber mat that you carve into, the ink, the carving tool, the roller, which is called the brayer. The carving tool actually has blades in the handle if you open it up and you can see the inside of it. That's where you stick the blades in. So the easiest way to do this, if you have a complicated design, is to carve out or is to draw your design and you can draw it onto a piece of tracing paper if you want to and then you can flip over the tracing paper and color all over it with like a 6b or a 9b pencil and then draw over the other side of it again and transfer your design onto your rubber mat it's a really easy way to transfer complicated designs I like to use a Sharpie to mark out the parts that I am not going to carve. So anything that has the Sharpie on it is what is going to be left raised and not carved and that's the part that you will see in the print. You can use any color that you can see easily. Make sure to have a good balance of positive and negative space. Have some lines that are thicker and have some lines that are thinner and maybe fill in some areas so that you don't just have a bunch of random lines. Now let's talk about the carving tool. This thing can be kind of confusing because it just looks like a, a handle. So if you open up the back of it, you just kind of have to squeeze it. There are little carving nibs inside of the handle and those come in different sizes and shapes and they are all used for different types of carving. If you look inside the little turny thing, there are actually three parts. There's the top that closes over it and there are two parts that help to squeeze the nib to hold it in place. So you just have to slide it in there and then tighten it. Make sure to put the nibs back in the handle so that they don't get lost because there is a set for each carving tool. Make sure to tighten it, but don't tighten it too much because if you tighten it too much, it'll be impossible to get off. Now for the carving, start small. You just kind of hold your carving tool parallel to your rubber mat. And if you need practice, start on a scrap first before you start carving. I like the medium V. I don't like the tiny one as much because I wait and use that when I need to get really detailed. And my advice is just to cut out the shape first, do the outside first and work away at it and then move on to the inside. And it may not be perfect. And if you cut away something that you didn't mean to cut away, that is okay. You can turn it into something else. It'll all work out in the end. Printmaking is supposed to have texture. So if you can't get it perfectly smooth, don't worry about it. If your print is small when you're done carving it, you can actually just cut it out like a stamp so that you don't have to have the big stamping pad and you can use it for other stuff.
One of the things that's fun that you can do is you can make a test print and then if it doesn't turn out the way you like, you can go back and carve it a little bit more or change it. To make a print, you get a piece of plexiglass and this one I'm using a small piece, but I'll show a video where we use a larger piece. And make sure the printmaking ink is really kneaded and squeezed so it doesn't drop out a bunch of oil and you just put a little bit on the plexiglass, less than you think you need. This is actually probably a little bit too much because it came out fast, but then you're gonna use your brayer, which is your roller, and you are going to roll it, roll it, roll it, roll it until it is super smooth and it's a very thin coat of ink. Be sure to work quickly because your ink is going to dry out pretty quickly. And I would recommend the small plexiglass plates only if you're making a tiny print. But here I'm rolling it. I'm just trying to make like a purple color. It's fun to mix two colors and just see what you can make. Again, this is probably a little bit too much ink. I cut off the stamp a little bit in my video, but I will show you in the next example what this should look like. The round thing is called a barren, and it is used for printing, and you can make everything kind of flat, or you can rub it on top of your print or your paper just to smooth out all of the little cracks and wrinkles and make sure that you get a detailed print. Here's another example of a larger plexiglass. So printing ink also sometimes comes in a jar, so you can use a palette knife to get it out. If it comes in a tube, you just squeeze it out. So here I'm gonna make kind of a rainbow gradient, and it's a large piece of plexiglass, and I'm just doing a very thin strip of ink. And then I'm gonna take my roller, and I'm just gonna blend those colors and keep rolling until it gets really, really blendy. And it's gonna look so pretty. And you want to make sure to keep it super thin. If you have too much ink, then your ink will get inside of the ridges of your stamp. And then, so here's the other thing. You can either roll directly onto your print or you can press your print down onto the ink. It really depends on what kind of effect you want. This student wanted to have a nice gradient on his cactus, so he just is rolling it. And it's very thin and very smooth. And he's using the Baron. And the reveal, and there it is, perfect print. When you sign your print, sign it on the bottom right and write the amount of prints you have and the number of the print it is. So like if you make 10 prints, you write one out of 10, two out of 10, et cetera.